Alright, so we're going to create this part using Inventor. First thing I want to do is make sure that I'm using the correct units. So I'll click the new icon and underneath you usually get templates, templates in this EN USA. If this is closed, just select the arrow next to it, select metric, and I'm using the standard millimeter IPT template. You can double click on this or you can hit the create button. Give it a little bit and eventually you will see Inventor opening in the background. And once it's open, you always want to verify that you are using the correct units. So I'll show you how to do that here. I usually select Tools and give it a couple more seconds. Document Settings. And then you want to select Units. And you should see here it's telling you that you're using millimeters. Go ahead and close this. Switch back over to 3D modeling. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a sketch. So if you do try to use the extrude command right off the bat, it's going to kick you over to the, the sketch menu. And this is only new in 2020, I believe. All the other ones will give you an error message. So it's easier just to go ahead and start with a 2D sketch. Now you can see that it's asking me to declare a plane or a surface or something that I want to create my first sketch on. I'll highlight this plane. And the words top just kind of goes to the side for me. I kind of like to turn that around. So what I'm going to do is select it with the arrow. And you can leave that how it is. It won't affect you on this drawing since we're just going to create a circle for our first sketch. Choose circle. Click on the yellow dot that's in the middle. And then start previewing your circle. And once you start seeing the circle extend, just type 6 and enter. You're going to see that it's a very small circle. Go ahead and finish the sketch. Or you also can right click and finish the sketch. I'm going to go to the extrude command and here it already selected my profile for me and my sketch plane that I want that I want it to go from. I can tell it the direction. I can tell it to go symmetrical or I can go asymmetrical and in this case that's going to be the one I'm going to use. Since my overall height of my drill bit it's going to be 80. Let's go ahead and make sure that we have 60 going down and enough going up. I always like to center my object right along the center point of my whole entire drawing. So I'm going to start as if I'm starting from right here in the middle. And if I divide just this bottom part or the thread part of my drill bit, I'm going to extrude down a distance of 40. And then I'm going to extrude up a distance of 20. And those two numbers together should give me the 60 that I'm looking for. So back here in Auto in Inventor, you can see that distance A, I, I will extrude up a height of 20. It's hard in this program not to hit the Enter button after you input your numbers. So try not to do that, and that's kind of hard for most AutoCAD users. This one I'm going to go down a height of 40. If I scroll out a little bit and give it the whole entire preview, you can see that I go up a distance of 20. I'm down a distance of 40. Go ahead and OK it. Next, I want to create a sketch along the top. So I'll select this top face. And you'll get some icons that will appear. The last icon is to create a sketch along that face. Go ahead and click that. I'm just going to rotate this top around again and scroll inward to my part. Start with a circle. In an inventor you do have the rights just to kind of put, place it anywhere you want. So I'm going to place it here and the diameter is 2. Next I have to decide 
how do I want to place this? Do I want to use dimensions or I can use constraints? So the first option here, I will use a dimension. So select dimension, select the center point, and then the center of your circle. And that distance is 2.5. Next on this one, on, on placing it along here, I know that that dimension from here to here should be zero. So I can physically do it with a dimension. And make that dimension zero. Or if you don't like doing that, let's go ahead and delete that dimension. So I just undo and delete. I can also use the horizontal constraint option. This is another benefit of having the word top in the right orientation. If I have it along going the other direction, then it'll become a horizontal or a vertical. So if you keep the words going straight, typically the constraints will go along with it. So I'll choose horizontal. Choose the center point here and the center point here. If you have to come back and change that, and you can see that with dimensions, you can graphically see things. If you want to go ahead and delete that, click on the center, and there you will have your constraint. Left click on that constraint, and then do a right click, and you can delete it. And if I delete that, you will see that now I'm able to move this circle back up and down. I'll go ahead and place it back with a dimension. The next thing I want to do is I want to create that cutout piece that's coming off of my circle. So I'll start with a line, and I'm just going to touch somewhere along my circle. Do a left click, and then touch somewhere along this one. Be careful to stay away from the quadrant because it will naturally try to snap you to it. So I will just kind of come back away from it a little bit and click directly on my circle. Now there's two things that I need to make sure that this line is in the right place. I'll need a dimension, once again, from the center to this end point. And this distance is 0.5. The next thing I'm going to need is that this line should be tangent with this circle. So I use a tangent constraint. Select the line and then select the circle. You can see that it does give you the tangent constraint icon. Next thing I want to do is that I don't want this yellow line or this projected image messing with my sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it first and then I'll choose the construction option. Okay, next I'll create a line from this end point going down this direction. I'll use a perpendicular constraint on this line and this line. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a line from somewhere along this circle to my end point. Instead of using the perpendicular between these two, I'll use the parallel option. So I'll select that line and this line, and you can see now that they run parallel. And then I'll add a tangent constraint to the circle. You can see that this has satisfied everything because down here in the bottom right corner, it says fully constrained. Next, I'll go ahead and trim this inside portion off of my circle. Once you've done this, you are completed the sketch that you're going to need to come to put the grooves into the drill bit. So go ahead and finish sketch. I'll use the coil command. And you can see that it selected this one profile. The axis that I'm going to need is going to be the axis that's running directly through the middle of it. If you look over at your UCS icon, you see that there's a green axis, which is the Y axis. So this is asking me for a axis. I'll expand the origin, and then I'll select Y axis. You can see that I have my helix that are ro that's rotating around this, and I'm just going to left click and hold on my view cube just to kind of rotate this around. Okay, and I do see that it's spinning the direction that I want it. 
you can change the direction by using these two. The pitch of this should be 25. So once you type in 25, try not to hit the, the in, enter button. And then the height of it, I always like to extend mine a little bit longer than normal. So I'm going to type in 80. Although, all I need to go is 60. By default, you may have one of these icons selected, the join or the cut option. We want this to actually cut from our shape. So make sure that you have this icon selected. And then select OK. You can see that that has cut out of my part. Let's take a look at it from the top view and rotate it around a little bit. If I zoom in, you can see that there's that cutout of what I was trying to look for. Referring back to the drawing, you will see that this is a rotation of this shape. So it's not a mirror. In this case, it's going to be a rotation. So let's go ahead and rotate our cutaway that we already have and do it to the other side of our part. So what I'm going to do is select Circular. The feature is the thing that I'm going to rotate. Select the coil. Select the icon for the axis. And just like we did before, we're going to select Y axis. And you can see that it's giving us a preview of what's happening. We need a placement of two of them. So this is the first one, and then that'll be the second one. And I can type in 180 degrees. Or you can see the preview, the 360 will satisfy. Let's take a look at this in isometric. And you can see that this is coiled through my shape. Looking at the bottom, you can see that there's a chamfer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of, I want that chamfer to happen actually before I cut my coils through this pattern. So I'm going to left click and hold and drag this right above the word coil 1. And this is a way that you can step back and do things previous before something happens. Choose chamfer. You can see that it's asking me for an edge and the distance is 2. Select your bottom edge and select OK. Left click and hold on this end part and pull it underneath your circular pattern. And now you can see that your coils have now happened after you did your chamfers. Let's take a look at doing this from the top. Well, or finishing the rest of this on the top side of this. So go ahead and select this face and choose the last icon. Go to circle. Click at the center. And once again, pull out and get a little preview. Six, enter. And then finish sketch. Extrude. And I'm going to give this a height of 20. So type in 20. Make sure that you have the join on. And always try not to hit enter after you hit this button. Because if I type in and I hit enter, it finishes the command for me. If it accidentally done that for you, you can always double click on the icon. And it should bring you back to the command. So now you can see that we do have the top part of our drill. Let's go ahead and put the rectangle that's along the top. So select the top face. Choose the last icon. I'll use a rectangle. So I'm going to select the drop down and I'll choose the two point center rectangle. Select the yellow center. And I always like to give myself a preview of it, so just make it some size. And then dimension. The dimension that's running along the top here is 10. And the dimensions that's running along the side is 1. Finished sketch. You can see that it did not take my 1 here. I'll double click on that. Make sure that that is 1. Extrude. Once again, 18. 
And I'm going to flip this down into my part, and you're going to see this red start to happen. Just change your Boolean operation to join. And select OK. Let's go ahead and use the fillet command. You can see that the radius is set to 2. And I'll go ahead and select these lines that are making the edges of 2. While I'm in the fillet command, I'm just going to select click to add. Change this dimension to 1. And then I'll select these inside lines. All the way around this shape. Okay, so now I've completed it. You can take a look at around your drill bit. Hopefully you enjoyed and thanks for watching.